Remember this guy? He was in my last video. His name is Christopher Martel. He's the guy who came up with a behavioral approach to depression. His model suggests that people's ongoing stress and stress from the past shapes their understandings and responses to the world. When we are under extreme stress, we learn ways of dealing with aversive emotions, and not all of them might be that helpful. These strategies might have been our only option when we were younger, or passively mirrored from a family member. Martel also recognised that there's only so much stress someone can take. Similar to the Yerkes Dodson model of stress, Martel theorised that too much stress can push people into unhelpful coping strategies. Stress comes in the form of punishments, such as financial stresses or being criticised at work. When life fills up with stress and we lack rewards, this can cause strong emotions. These emotions or feelings, such as sadness, guilt or anger, are motivating states for change. Feelings and body states such as boredom or feeling overwhelmed can also be motivating factors. The next step is to investigate the behaviour that is used to avoid the aversive emotion. The idea in depression is that something changes in the environment that causes stress, but what mains the state in the long term and gives the clinical diagnosis of depression is the short-term strategies put in place to deal with the environment. For instance, isolating to feel better from anxiety or sadness. One of the most important parts of the model is understanding the intentions of a behaviour. We would compare the intentions versus the consequences to help the patient bring light to the unhelpful nature of a behaviour. Or to help the therapist see the positive function of a behaviour. At no point should we stop being curious or move away from the collaborative empiricism that CBT is founded upon. The main idea in this model is that the behaviour will give some sort of relief or positive feeling that then reinforces it. Unfortunately though, this can then lead to unintended consequences. When considering isolation as a short-term strategy, we can see this in action. This behaviour can make it harder to talk to friends after a long period of time. There might also be unintended consequences of feeling more upset or having more time to ruminate about sad events. These stressful outcomes then lead to life being more stressful, more punishing, and it also gets in the way of us finding reward. In the bigger picture, you can see that the behavioural cycle starts to give a descent into depression. We might always be challenging these patterns, and it might not be that easy to stop one of these deep-seated coping strategies. The best thing about this model is the absence of blame. The model shows that past learning and current stress understandably bring the person to seek out comfort, even if the comfort punishes them later on.